What's up, haters? Today we're gonna talk about your unpopular makeup opinions. I asked on my Instagram for your unpopular makeup opinions and we're gonna talk about them. I would have asked on my community tab, I just forgot. So <laughs> if you weren't on Instagram, you don't get to do it, but we can always do it again. That's the beauty of this. Let's jump into it. I will not be calling any of you out by name. You are all safe. I will be using they, them pronouns when referring to anyone who submitted them to keep you anonymous. And if you happen to be a they, them, I'm sorry. Fake freckles are dumb. Uh, okay, I get it. Okay, so I don't have freckles. And I also not really someone who wanted to get into the freckle trend. Like I had the I had the Rudy Berry pen on my list for a while and I never bought it. And I think that says a lot about where I fall on my desire to be part of that trend. I don't have freckles. I can't say what it is like to see a bunch of people who don't have freckles try to glamorize a thing that might have caused me grief as a child. I don't think that people who do the fake freckle trends have any ill intentions with it. I think they think it's cute. I think if I had freckles, I would be flattered by that, but I also don't have the trauma associated with freckles. There might be a trend to coming for me down the line where people are like, mullets are in and it's all mullets, you know? I don't know. I don't really know. I, most of my trauma from childhood is about being fat and queer. We can't really do that in makeup. <laughs> also, someone said fake freckles look fake in another one. I'm not sure that people who are doing fake freckles are always trying to make them look organic. Technique is more important than product. I agree to an extent, but I think there's a bunch of things that I think tools can help. Better tools can give you a better application. Technique obviously can give you a better application, but there's also just limitations on what certain products can do. I don't think everyone needs to buy the most expensive products. I think that when you're getting into makeup, I think starting with cheap products is great. And I also think if I had products that I don't like anymore in my life again, that I tried at the beginning of my makeup journey, I think I would look better in those products just because I have become a more skilled technician when it comes to applying makeup. Sometimes I think upgrading the formula or trying different formulas is very helpful in making you feel more confident. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think the problem with like the product chasing, chasing for better products becomes a problem whenever you are always buying new stuff and not trying at all to make the things you bought work. Like, I do think there's a point that you come to with some products where you're like, this doesn't work for me, or I just simply don't like the way this applies because I just, I don't think we have to like every product either. I think trying to teach people technique is really difficult too, because technique is only improved with practice. So it depends on how much you're wearing makeup or how much you want to improve your makeup in a shorter period of time. Like you can apply makeup, remove it, apply makeup, remove it, apply makeup, remove it, and learn techniques quicker that way and become more proficient in them. It's how I learned how to do winged liner with liquid liner, which I don't even do anymore. I don't even like that look anymore. But like, that's how I did it. I would practice it and then wipe it off and then wait till my skin to dry and I would practice it again. I would just keep going and going and going until I learned how to do it. So I think I, I agree with the sentiment being put forward here. I do not like the current makeup blindness trend, both the language and the concept. So if you're not on TikTok or I don't know if this is this trend has made its way to Instagram reels or if it's on YouTube short, it's funny because I do this, but am I trendy? Mm -hmm. No. Like I posted a TikTok about the Victoria Beckham concealer and I don't think anyone on TikTok knows that Victoria Beckham has a beauty branch because uh, I feel like people are like, who? What are you talking about? Anyway, so I'm not hip with it. I, I'm not. I'm hip with you, but I'm not hip with them, you know? So the trend kind of has been to look at past photos of yourself and make fun of how much or how little makeup you were wearing at a specific period of time. A lot of the times you're you were participating in a trend, what was trendy makeup wise. So eyebrow blindness has been one of the things that has come up. Blush blindness, those are the only two I've seen, but I imagine that there are more. I think maybe eyeshadow blindness was a one too because like eyeshadow is not super trendy right now. Like I know it's not trendy for me, but like young people, I guess, aren't as into eyeshadow. Like, they're not doing cut creases like we were 10 years ago, you know? I love self-deprecating humor. I love looking back on things and, like, making fun of myself. But the thing about posting that kind of stuff online, it invites third parties to do the same. And I think that's where the problem happens. Like, I think looking back and being like, wow, I used to wear a lot of blush. I don't wear that much blush anymore. And, like, chuckling at it, I think that's fine. Like, I don't think that that is harmful. But when we were all, like, ganging up on specific people for how they did their eyebrows in 2016 when everyone was spending 20 to 30 minutes on simply their eyebrows, like, I don't think us dogpiling on them is helpful or fun for anyone. Like, I, I bet the people who have gone, you know, viral for doing that trend and 
probably have a lot of mixed feelings about it internally because it's like, yeah, I posted this because I thought it was funny, but then also hundreds of thousands of people also agreed. It's a wild, wild west out there in short form content. People, that's where people get mean <laughs> in short form. That's where they leave the meanest comments. I know from personal experience, that's where people are the nastiest to me. I think it's better to roast products, not people. And I also think we should have a fondness for for that kind of thing, like uh, have a fondness for our past selves. We wouldn't favor the things we do today. We wouldn't apply things the way we do today if we didn't learn from that. Like I probably would still not be wearing blush if I never had a phase where I applied blush, like I over applied blush or over applied blush. Like uh, what I what I would consider now an over application blush on me. But I'm not out here trying to look at other people doing their makeup and like laugh at them for the way, because like, a lot of people like really heavy blush drapey looks. And I still think that's really cool. It's just not a look I do all the time anymore. I love self-deprecating humor but we have to have like a kindness to ourselves which I think sometimes we lack and, and I think also we also lack that kindness for other people and we also don't give those people the benefit of the doubt and I think that this trend kind of feeds into so many things I don't really like the trend I think looking back is fun but I also think looking back in a public forum is a mistake I'm kind of tired of multi-chromes being in every indie palette you can have sparkles without shifts hmm yeah yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, I I have been in, I I have like, you know, I've been, Bella Butte Bar has been kind enough to send me a lot of things recently. And I think I will be trying some indie brands coming up. I have a lot of Cleona eyeshadows, but I don't have any of Cleona's palettes. I do think we are at this place where everyone feels like they need to have a multi-chrome in an eyeshadow palette in order for it to be a successful. I don't think that that's true. In fact, it. I guess I also agree. I, I feel it's starting to feel like a cop out. I do think I do like at least a duochrome in my sparkle, but I also think that multichromes aren't always sparkly. You know, I think sometimes they're just the shift. And I, I, I like sparkle. I really like sparkle. So I, I don't. I want there to be sparkle, and I want there to be a lot of it. Okay, that's what I'm into. But yeah, I guess I, I I don't I have I don't know. I couldn't tell you the last time I used like a black based multi-chrome on my eyes. I just don't do that very much anymore. And if it's in an eyeshadow palette, if I were to use a multi-chrome now, I probably wouldn't use it with other colors. I probably would do neutrals as a base if I was going to do that. But honestly, if I was using a multi-chrome now, I'd probably just put the multi-chrome on the center of my lid and blend it out and be like, that's eyeshadow, <laughs> which is like basically what I do with every eyeshadow now. <laughs> No makeup makeup should involve as little makeup as possible. I don't know. I don't know about that because it gets a little dicey because there are some people who have who are not fans of their own skin. Uh, they might be acne prone. They might have aging skin. They might have discoloration in order to for them to get what they consider like back to zero might require a lot of makeup and a lot of covering and a lot of technique. So I don't know that I agree with this. I, for me, if I'm doing a no makeup makeup look, I'm just not wearing makeup. <laughs> like I just, I will forgo it altogether. And I also feel like the makeup I currently do is as close to no makeup, makeup like like whatever that trend is. I'm wondering if this person who submitted this is just like frustrated when people do no makeup, no makeup makeup and they do like a full drag beat, but don't put eyeshadow on. <laughs> And I can definitely see that. I think if you're looking for it, I think it's hard to find people who are actually doing what I would consider to be no makeup makeup, because I think the desired effect should be that you look like you're not wearing makeup. But I do think that requires a lot of makeup for some people. And I'm not, I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I say for like, I think that there's anything wrong if you have acne prone skin or if you have like discoloration that requires more makeup for you to feel comfortable. But I think that just easily breezily saying that like no makeup makeup should be required no makeup or like as little makeup as possible. I just think that that's going to look different for everyone. So I disagree. A dupe is rarely, dare I say, better than the original. I think I've like skirted around the issue of duping issue or the conversations about duping because I, the thing is, once you start flapping your mouth about something on the internet, people are going to respond to that. And then you have to keep having those conversations if they require having further conversations. And I think the conversations about dupes is one of those conversations that like, I simply do not want to have. <laughs> um, but we're going to do it here because that's what this was about. For me, personally, for me, I have no, I have not an interest in the dupe. If I have an interest in something, I'm going to buy the thing that I want. And that is a privilege. 
I oftentimes have the means to buy the the thing, whatever the thing is. The, and if it happens to be the most expensive version of the thing, and if that's the original thing. But I want the thing. I don't want the dupes. So, like, with the, sh like, uh, I don't even, what do I have that has a lot of dupes? I don't even have the Charlotte. Like, the, the thing that always comes to mind for me is the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter for a Hollywood Glow or whatever, <laughs> whatever that product is. And all of the dupes that have come out from it. I've tried the original and I thought it was a good product. But I have Auric which is like a similar product, but it doesn't ha it doesn't look like it. But so I won't consider it a dupe because I don't even think it looks like it. If I were to buy the thing, I would buy the Charlotte Tilbury one and I wouldn't buy the Elf one. I, I think another example of that, I have the Charlotte Tilbury Spotlight one, which is like not a thing I actually wanted, but it was a thing I bought for the Charlotte Tilbury video. And then I ended up really liking it and I kept it. I don't really pay attention to dupes. The only thing that I think is for me, like, <laughs> whenever it comes to dupe culture, eyeshadow brands that have similar colors and being like, okay, if you have this thing, you probably don't need this thing. I think that's when I want to talk about, I actually want to talk about dupes and the fact like, I don't really want to have overlap in my makeup collection of like a lot of the same thing, especially when it comes to eyeshadows. I don't need, like if I have the eyeshadow shade once, I don't feel like I need it many times over. Like whenever an eyeshadow palette comes out that looks a lot like an eyeshadow palette I already have. So for example, the Natasha Denona I need a nude eyeshadow palette and the makeup by Mario eyeshadow palette they look some they almost look the same to me like they're not exactly the same and I wouldn't call either one like a dupe for the other but it's like that they evoke the same kind of like artistry right it's like you know it's kind of the same thing it's like oh I don't need the other thing I find that sometimes from the consumer angle when it comes to dupes I feel like I'm seeing people makeup lovers who I don't Again, this is just like, I, I never want to see people like buying a bunch of something to tell other people that like these are dupes if if that's not what they're, they do. And I don't mean that like, I don't think that they are skilled enough to be able to tell you whether or not it's a dupe. Like Temptalia, I think is a good person to use. Like Temptalia swatches everything and like has that whole system where she tries to tell you what's really close to it and like whatever. Temptalia can buy all of those things and tell me what's a dupe for what and like what's close. I'll let Temptalia do that. I think Temptalia probably makes a lot of money doing that. And she can do that. Like me doing makeup reviews, I feel very similarly about. Like I'm making money on this, right? So it's like my relationship with consumption is different, right? Like it's like, oh, this comes in. That's a business expense. If you can write off your dupe searches as a business expense, then go ahead. But like, I just don't, I feel, I don't. I don't want anyone to feel like that's normal to go on a hunt for a dupe and have to spend all of that money just for the greater good. And I also think that buying the dupe for some people, not everyone, but I think maybe most people, that you still are going to have the curiosity of whatever the other thing is. And maybe if you buy five things that are supposed to be dupes and you're still not satisfied, those things could have added up cost wise to whatever the thing that you were trying to save money to dupe is. So I don't know. I think I think there's a way to for dupe culture to be helpful. I don't think the way that it exists now is that way. I don't want to discourage anyone who like maybe does that. Like I, like I don't obviously I don't think that you need to be doing it to make money to to find dupes, right? Like I don't think you need to be doing that. I'm just saying like it feels like a slippery slope to me for you to be spending a lot of money to, for for no reason. Like if you're not getting anything back from that. Unless unless the satisfaction of being like this is an exact dupe for this brings you all the satisfaction in the world great that wouldn't it wouldn't be me it wouldn't be me but i want and i and just me i want the thing if i want the thing i want the thing and if i can't afford the thing i just won't buy the thing i won't buy the dupe either uh, you know i just want the thing the, the allure of the thing is the thing it's not the the a thing that's like that thing <laughs> call me vain but packaging plays an incredibly large role whether i'm going to use something i'm about to pan this beautiful packaging gorgeous stunning I find myself not reaching for this very often because I don't think the packaging is very alluring. So I'm with you. There are so many things in my makeup collection when I think of when I'm looking through the drawers. Good packaging will, I will use something with better packaging. And that's why I decanted this your foundation because it is my favorite goop. It's in a bad component. I also like heavy luxe packaging. So if I have options to choose the luxe packaging, like if I'm looking through my drawers, whatever I know to be the most luxurious feeling thing is uh, sometimes will make the decision for me. Am I a bad person?
Probably. I don't get those tanning drops at all. I feel like they look patchy AF and you just need to cover it up later. I mean, I don't know if you're talking about self tanning drops or if you're talking about something that gives you like an instant tan. If we're talking about something like the drunk elephant drops, I'm not sure if the packaging says this, but like I would always mix it in with something and I always felt like it looked really good. But I think if you try to apply it directly to the face and perhaps maybe that's like the thing is like everyone's using them wrong or specific ones can be used directly on the skin without being mixed in. But like most of them are supposed to be mixed in. I don't know. This isn't a trend that I'm super invested in. So I think your opinion's great. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I don't I just like not a product that I, I would I would use. I think the closest thing I have is this and it's like just in the product. Like I'm not mixing this with something and I think it applies a beautiful like glow, but I don't even think it applies too much of a tan either. Most foundations, concealers look bad in real life. I disagree. As someone who loves foundation, I think some of them can look really good. I think bad ones look very detectable in real life. Concealers, it depends on what you're doing with a concealer. I do think that like under eye concealer can sometimes get a little bit dicey, but I think that skin can look really natural with foundation. I think full coverage foundation is where you run into problems. I think if you are working with lighter coverage and you're allowing some of the flaws still to come through while you have a complexion product on, I think that is can look very natural and undetectable in real life. But also I think it's important to keep in mind, not everyone is trying to have undetectable makeup. Some people want you to know they're wearing it. I'm not talking about eyeshadow, I'm talking about, you know, the base you know, blush, contour, like all that stuff. They really, they might really want you to know that they're wearing makeup. Then eyebrows are hot. I agree. I don't understand why eyebrows are trends. I think that here's where technique comes into the play. I don't think that people who have thin eyebrows should try to strive to have fluffy eyebrows and feel bad about having thin eyebrows. It's just what you were given. It is just how your body works that you have thin eyebrows. If you have thick eyebrows, you shouldn't, I don't feel like you should feel like you should pluck them to be thin just because you think that that's on trend or whatever. I think working with what you have when it comes to your eyebrows is key. I never had self-consciousness about my eyebrows. I had very full eyebrows during a time where full eyebrows were in and then I shaved them off. And so now I don't worry about eyebrows at all, actually. <laughs> but I think, I don't think that we need to make eyebrows a trend. I hate lip liner. I'm gonna go ahead and agree. Lip liner is not an exciting product to me. I don't like spending money on lip liners. I have a couple that I like, um, but like, it's not my thing. Some people lip liner, that's their whole thing. I'm not that person. I don't care about lip liner. Bright under eye concealer makes people look older. Okay, so I think the problem when we all started doing under eye brightening <laughs> is that I think the way a lot of people my age learned to do that are people who got into makeup around the time. The makeup around the time I got into makeup, so like 2015 to like 2020, we were doing makeup inspired by drag. And for drag performers, for people who are going to be on stage, you need that to be very contrasty. So instead of just doing something that's slightly brightening under the eye, people are doing like two shades lighter than their skin tone. And I think that really does make people look like it ages people. I think if you're going like a half shade lighter, you know what I mean? Like if you were just going a little bit lighter, I think you can do a lot for just like a little bit of brightening. But I don't think that people are really doing this anymore. I have kind of moved on to concealers that match me as best as I can for my under eye. I do use a brightening powder, but the brightening powder, like it like only brightens it just like a little bit. I do like having just a little bit of brightness under there. And I, I also think that this is one of those things where it comes back to, it depends on the person. I think people who have like really dark under eyes, they're really trying to, <laughs> they're trying to come back to zero. And I think that that takes a lot. I think dark under eyes takes a lot of skill to learn how to do and make it undetectable, like to come back to just like your skin tone under your eyes. And I don't think that everyone has that skill. You listen, we're, we keep coming back to that person who said, it's about technique, it's about skill, and it is. I wish fewer makeup slash skincare products had hyaluronic acid in them. It's almost impossible to avoid if you've spent any time on my channel. Makeup is makeup, skincare is skincare. I don't want you to sell me makeup with skincare in it. I've said this before, if it's something about the formula that makes it work better on my skin, sure, whatever. But I think what we're all learning, well, what, what I have learned in this space as a content creator, my skin's not super sensitive to a lot of things, but I have learned a lot of people are very sensitive to hyaluronic acid, <laughs> niacinamide, and a lot of things that brands are putting into these products. And like, I don't know, I feel like we're starting to see like exfoliators and complexion products. And I'm like, 
no, <laughs> like literally no. What do you mean? No, no, no. Like, the skincare hybrid stuff. I feel like hyaluronic acid was like a, a selling point and now I feel like all moisturizers have it in it. I'm not sensitive to hyaluronic acid. I don't really care about hyaluronic acid. I don't think a lot of brands are doing hyaluronic acid in a very effective way. It's like the most effective in like certain ways and I don't think every brand's doing that. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it. Makeup is makeup. Skincare is skincare. Not all skincare needs to have the buzzword ingredient in it. I don't care what fits my face shape and undertone. I do what I like. That is the way. That is the way. That's the attitude. Everyone should, everyone should be more like this person. <laughs> T. I have gone through phases like that for sure. Now I like, you know, a certain, to look a certain way, but I don't, I hope I never come across that you should be doing something doing exactly what I'm doing. I think it, you, everyone should be doing the makeup that makes them feel fierce. And if if you have a pink undertone, but you like to wear yellow concealer, yellow undertoned concealer, and that's what makes you feel the best, and you want to do eyeshadow on your cheek, like however, whatever you're doing, do it. I think, I honestly, that's also like, you know, a lot of people who are very cool do that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm not that, I'm not that kind of cool person anymore. So I, I'm basic. There's nothing wrong with a bold eye look and no mascara. I agree. Honestly, that could be like even better sometimes because then you, you kind of, that like your eyelashes kind of disappear. I think that's fierce. Okay, this one's two parts. New lips wash some people out and we need to bring back cool toned makeup. I mean, I'm here to bring back cool toned makeup. I'm all about that, love that. Into that, into that. I do feel like we've, ugh, there was a time where everything was so, so warm toned. I do feel like we've come back to the middle a little bit with undertones. We're not like, also I, the other, something that really bothers me is like, and I do it too. I do it too. I do it too because it's become such a common part of the vernacular in the online makeup space. But like neutral is one thing. Warm toned is another thing. Warm toned neutrals, we are now, that's a, they're combating as a descriptor because it's either neutral or it's warm toned. I sometimes, and again, I say I do this, but like, we'll, sometimes people will open up an eyeshadow palette. Again, I've been guilty of this. And it will be, warm browns and they'll be like this is a warm neutral palette and it's like well, what do you mean it's a warm tone palette people with warm undertones that's gonna feel more neutral to them but it's like it's still a warm tone palette i think we need to start calling i need we and i i mean to we all need to be better about calling what it actually is whenever it comes to that kind of thing uh new lips wash people out i don't i just i i think if it washes them out then it's not an actual nude lip on that person brands losing their identity to become overpriced dupe brands is infuriating brands mainly re producing dupes while raising prices as well bring back three dollar elf i agree i'm tired i want people and i i mean elf as well to just like innovate product instead of chasing trends i was listening to a podcast today about madonna and it was like a four part series and it like took all day to get through. I'm actually not done. I'm on the fourth part and I'm like still not done all eight hours today. I was listening to a podcast about Madonna. Eight, again, it's called Pop Pantheon. If you want to listen to it, it's great. It's a great podcast. If you were into that kind of thing. I didn't know a lot about Madonna. Like I knew about Madonna, but like not uh, everything. And it was like very interesting, very storied career. But what they were talking about is Madonna was at her worst whenever she wasn't creating trends. So when she was chasing trends, she was at her worst. And I think that kind of all brands right now, and maybe this is why I feel this way about makeup right now, is like, I think all brands right now are tracing trends as opposed to innovating and creating them, which is maybe why a lot of people aren't buying makeup right now. I, I think a lot of people are just like disillusioned right now. I think there's a lot of things right now. And I think brands are trying to play it safe because people don't have money and they want people to buy their stuff. And it's like, well, there's this other successful thing. If I just make a thing just like it, and then people will buy it. I get it too. Like, and there was enough, there was a third one left out that was kind of just talking about this. <laughs> I care about the people who work at brands. Like I wouldn't want a brand to like close and like people to be out of a job, but like, also I don't care about brands. Get it together or make something worth our time and we'll buy it. That, and but everyone's too scared to do that. But that's what I like to see more of. I think that's why a lot of people are only really paying attention to indie brands at this time. Rare Beauty doesn't have any great products. I can agree. I don't couldn't tell you. Uh, the last rare beauty product I bought with my money was the skin tint. I remember liking it, but I liked the Chantecaille more. And that's why that one didn't stay in my makeup collection. It was there for a bit though. And then I had the rare beauty highlighter, which everyone really likes. And I was like, 
and why <laughs> and for what. And I don't know what it is. It's my toxic trait is that that price point. It's like this weird blind spot. I would pay attention to more drugstore than things at that price point. So like Rare Beauty, Tower 28, About Face, I guess like Half Magic to some extent. It's like this weird blind uh, REM Beauty. It's like this price point that I do not care about. It's not saving me money, but I also don't feel like they're innovating either. About Face I think has innovated, by the way. I don't want to like completely count that brand out. It's just like this weird blind spot. Like I just don't care about that brand. <laughs> I just don't care about that price point for some reason. It just like misses me. Dark shades of the Lisa Eldridge Velvet lipsticks are patchy and mediocre. I mean, I can't speak to that. I haven't tried them. Fight about it in the comments. <laughs> Boost the engagement. <laughs> Fight about it. In the Kindly. Kind words. Gentle hands. I absolutely hated the OG Givenchy Prism Leap Powder. If you are watching this video, I would like to know if, if you've tried the new one and you like that one more. Here's my take. I'm like indifferent to the original powder. I have it. I think it's lovely, but it doesn't feel like a powder that has revolutionized my makeup application or the way my makeup looks at the end. I think it's really good, but it's not the first one I would recommend, I guess. So it's like, fine, it's fine. I know a lot of other people feel differently about it, but I wasn't devastated. It's like, oh, okay, I can't link it anymore was kind of just like, it's like I can keep using it, but I like, I don't need to, I won't link it anymore. If any of you have bought the Givenchy Prism Libre based on my recommendation, I would be shocked because I feel like the whole time I've had it, I've been like, it's fine. Drugstore mascara is trash, even the good ones. I kind of agree. I don't like that though. <laughs> like, I hate that. I hate that that is how I also feel. It'd be great to save money on mascara. My favorite mascaras tend to be in the $30 range, unfortunately. Unf I don't love that. I don't love that for me. <laughs> I don't love that for me. But that is the price of my most of my favorite mascaras have like landed in the $30 range, which is like, unfortunate. <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I won't fuss really around with the drugstore ones. I mean, sometimes I get drugstore ones in PR, like, this one, but guess what? Remember how I was like, maybe in a couple weeks? Uh, no, it still is gloopy and hard for me to use. This one confuses me because I guess I didn't know we were all against color correctors, but I love color corrector. Hey, uh, uh, lipstick in my white Valentino. Do we hate color corrector? I think, I guess, I guess I don't, I don't hate color. I have one, but I don't really utilize it all the time. But that's like a laziness thing rather than like, I dislike it. I also think maybe, I'm not like a makeup, makeup, makeup artist, right? I haven't done a lot of makeup on other people, but color correcting is like a skill that I think is something that takes a lot of practice to learn. And I think a lot of us don't put in the practice to learn how to color correct because some people might need to use a couple different colors of color corrector to get the desired thing that they want um, or very specific color correctors, technique, skills, you know, like I think that, if you lack the skills for a color corrector, it's really scary and it's like an overwhelming step for a lot of people. I didn't know that it was like an unpop popular thing to do, I guess. And I think a lot of people I watch on YouTube, at least, do under eye corrector, at least. I watch Hannah. She uses green color corrector so much of it, <laughs> like way more, like way more than I would ever use. So it's like, you know, I think I guess I just, maybe I'm I'm not on that side of the internet. I don't know what's going on over there. It sounds scary. And then, oh God, what a, what a dramatic one. Okay, I'll pull mine out too, because I have it. The phytosurgeous lip balms kind of suck. It made my lips more, look more wrinkly than usual. So I have one. They did send it to me, uh, NPR. I, I don't love it either. I don't, I don't. And uh, as I'm learning, um, sometimes phytosurgeous products require some playing around with to use, but I want to just be able to do that with my lip balm. And I don't feel like that. Not because of the color. I think that they did a really good job with pigmentation, but it doesn't make my, my lips feel that great. It doesn't make them feel worse, which is good. But I like a very cushy balm. And it's not a super cushy balm. So if you like a very, very thin balm, I think that that's what, who would like that. And you can layer it up and I have layered it up and I don't feel like it ever gets to the point where it's like very like luscious and I don't know. I, I guess I agree with this person, unfortunately. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry. 
love a lot of Fido Surgeon's products, though. You know. If you've been here, you know. And that's it. That's your unpopular opinions on Instagram, not on channel community tab, because I forgot to, <laughs> forgot, <laughs> forgot to do it. I simply forgot to do it. So I'm sorry for anyone who's here or not on Instagram. You can follow me on Instagram. You don't have to feel compelled to. This it was really my bad. It was really my bad. I thought about it literally right before I filmed this. Also, I was like a little bit nervous. I was like right before filming this, I was filming something that I was a little bit out of my depth filming. Um, anyway, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for watching this all the way through. My name is Tom. Perhaps you knew that already. <laughs> but what I like to do on my channel is I like to help myself and help you be more discerning about the makeup, fragrance, and clothing that we're buying. If that sounds good to you, I would love to have you subscribe. I I just want to... I We don't need to buy all of the things. I try to help you make the most informed decisions you can whenever I do a review. So that's what we're doing here. I have channel memberships and Patreon. If you're into that sort of thing, go check it out. I do an additional piece of content over there every month. It's not a better way to support me, just a different way to support me. Thank you to all my current channel members and patrons. You are the absolute best. I really appreciate you. You will make things like reviews happen. This came in. I actually just slapped this on my eyes real quick before filming this. I haven't put it on my cheek yet, though. But there's no pressure to join my Patreon channel members. I'm just happy that you are here. Let me know down below what some of your unpopular opinions are if you want to keep the conversation going. Should I... Uh, Excuse me. Should I do a part two? Let me know. In my pinned comment down below is a link to help a family in Gaza. If you have the means to support them, please do so. And that's going to wrap up the video for me. Oh, Rat Collect. That's a podcast I do with Tiff. Love them. Love that podcast. Go subscribe over there and listen to that if you'd like. And now I'm done. Remember to follow your hope and you'll find me. I'll see you in a video very soon. Go forth to talk. Open your heart to me, baby.